But uh, today, Conan and I will return to the 90s, 1994 to be exact, our yes. junior years of high school. Uh, uh, 1994 was an influential year on us musically. Outkast released their debut album. Kurt Cobain dies right as the genre he helps to usher into the mainstream shoots into the stratosphere of arena rock. At the same time, Green Day releases their debut, which will take punk music from unwanted fringe to pop stardom. 1994 is also a year for some that are seeing the sunset on the golden age of hip hop. With the rise of Biggie Smalls, hip hop is headed to the club where it still resides. Nas released his classic debut record, Illmatic, in 1994. He will follow it up just a few years later with It Was Written, a massive departure from his boom bap roots, and take a step into the direction of mainstream radio playability and success. Trip hop is born with the success of Portis Head and Massive Attack, just to name a few. Metal gets a new lease on life in 94. Uh, as it marks the beginning of a short-lived genre, new metal. And we can definitely get more into that on this show. Uh, also, as usual, the phone lines will be open so we can hear you guys sound off on the question. Is 1994 the greatest year of music? Um, Conan, it's for you, because yeah. we grow up in the same state but in slightly different areas. You're about two hours away from me. Right, right. Slightly, slightly different, vaguely hick ass areas. Yeah. <laughs> but just two, you're just two hours away. Yeah. And a world um, apart. <laughs> for you, can you provide an overview of what the musical landscape of 94 looked like for you? Junior sure. year Conan. Do you have long hair? No, no, I've never had long hair. I don't look good with it. <laughs> like I've actually tried a couple times. Like I I get to about mid-length and I'm like, mm, this ain't you just look like a lesbian. This ain't. <laughs> <laughs> like a bad one yeah not even attractive one. and uh i did have blue hair for a while like i dyed my hair blue before like you know like now i feel like that, that's come to mean like oh you go to anime conventions or something but like <laughs> but, but at the time it was a way of expressing rebellion uh you know whatever <laughs> think of that what you will almost all my high school pictures um like the yearbook and stuff are all black and white too which is kind of like all right whatever yeah it's safe for me uh, only only seniors in my high school got uh, color photos. Right. And that's the one where like I had like just the blondest. I just look like a nice. Oh, what a nice young man. Do you like, have a I, picture? I I oh, oh, Conan Neutron. Here's a question I have for you. Yeah. yeah. 94 was the year I had my first ever show in front of people. Oh, do wow. Well, any, do you have any pictures of uh, your. You were ahead of me. I didn't start. I didn't play my first show until. Oh, boy. I want to say 90. 98 maybe 99 like i was starting to play <laughs> i was starting to play but it wasn't any damn good not that that any uh didn't stop anybody but we had a band that we called the worst <laughs> 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 and uh we were real busy working out like discographies and logos and then all this stuff and yeah we would play music but we never it, for whatever reason we never really played a show so i didn't play a show until i got up to oakland and there was a couple shows pre there's a pre-replicator band called phalanx that um hmm. which would be like failing it's a good name, it's a good name. <laughs> failing what is what the band's called failing no it's called phalanx because remember this, you got to book stuff on the phone right you got to tell oh yeah and you had to tell yeah. the man always man you had to have uh, what, what, what what you man. sounded like oh did you get the thing yeah i did i didn't listen to it though just tell me what you sound like oh my god hell absolute hell people kids <laughs> got no idea how easy it is now um but that was a few you years really later. don't have you ever tried to try out Oh my god! I've had to try oh. out. Oh, dude, rough. I've so, so, it. and that was a, a only that that band only lasted a few shows before it kind of morphed into Replicator, which I was in for like ten years. So it's like I I don't have a lot of like oh here's these cornball bands that did these things. I do, but it wasn't in public, so therefore, and it certainly wasn't in the YouTube era. Uh, I god. will say, answering the actual intent of the question, ninety four. I was I was into music, right? So I I've been like. And not into music, like into music, like my parents' music, which is all like classic rock and and good stuff, you know, like Beatles and Sabbath and like Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young and, uh, uh, you know, uh, Led Zeppelin and, and the likes, even like ACDC and even like, you know, Billy Idol and, and stuff like that. Like I grew up with music around the house, but it wasn't until I heard Nirvana, uh, Nevermind. 
that I was like, oh, this this is like for me. And then I immediately sought out all the stuff that they were like friends with and they were common cause with, you know, Butthole Surfers, Sonic Youth, Melvins, uh, so on and so on. And just that started my <laughs> boulder rolling down the hill of, uh, of music fandom. So, uh, and I say this because some of the records that came out in 94, I was already in, like an avid fan of. So when you have something like, you know, the MTV Unplugged by Nirvana came out or, uh, you know, Super Unknown by Soundgarden came out. Downward Spiral. I remember I listened to Downward Spiral the first day, got that CD, CD, the first day. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I heard uh, closer. I was like, well, this one's never going to be on the radio. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> because he says, I want to fuck you like an animal like 70,000 you know. times. Yeah. I know. I was so wrong because I love. Like, I thought Pretty Hate Machine was great, but Broken was, I was like, hell yeah, this is what's up here. This, this is, this is real shit. And I was like, that when Downward Spiral came out, I was like, oh, cool. You know, I, I dig this right on. And, uh, but I, I, again, I was wrong about it, like almost all of that. But like, I, I was already kind of listening to like the early Beck stuff, right? For instance. And I was already listening to, uh, you know, Meat Puppets. Uh, Beastie Boys, like, like, like a lot of things that it would be about a year and a half later where I worked at a record store that my musical uh, boundaries were really kicked open by just knowing like, oh my God, there's like really great like hip hop. There's like really great like country music. There's really great electronic. Like I, I had my, my world change there, but I was starting to get there around this year. Uh, you know, I wasn't cool enough to know, like, Guided by Voices or Arch of Loaf or anything <laughs> like that, you know, but I was well aware of the fact that, like, hey, you know, and not, and you got to remember, too, there's also, um, like, Pink Floyd put out a record in 94. They, yeah, the they did, album. and it's not very good. It's, it's not good. So that was the thing of, like, oh, that's. Uh, I had to listen to music. it. I had to listen to it and making mm. the playlist. Yeah, it's not great. And, and R.A.M., uh, they did Monster, which was fine, right? But it was sort of like, as you as people knew rem it wasn't really the uh what you think of when you when you think of rem so like near the the back part of that year <clears throat> is after i'd moved to oakland and started working at a record store so my knowledge and my interest my voracious interest as a music fan ramped up but and i was so i was exposed to a lot of the pop stuff like i, I mentioned the um the tori amos record <laughs> right <laughs> huge when that record came out i worked at the record store that record oh my god like so many uh so many lovely young ladies with their poetry books showed up to buy that shit like it was all all the time like like tori must have that. and like you could you could kind of eyeball all right who's here for the offspring <laughs> who's here to buy tori amos you know who's here you you could just kind of tell by the by their look and their general feel uh people may revise history uh, the first corn record came out that year. Nobody cared about corn. Nobody. Uh, -uh not at all. It took a minute. Mm -hmm. Nobody. Took a minute. Like I heard it, and I actually first time I heard it, I like kind of laughed. And and someone's like, "Oh, this band's from Bakersfield." I'm like, "Yeah, that tracks." Do you know what their name was originally? <laughs> uh, I don't. L A P D. <laughs> wow. Love <laughs> and peace, dude. That was their original name. <laughs> I'm being totally okay. serious. I wish I could make that up. Uh, you know what else came out this year that made exactly uh, zero splash at the the fourth coolest record store out of four in Berkeley was a Welcome to Sky Valley by Caius. I did not know from any of the desert stuff at all. Uh, nobody made... really was up on that. What's really funny is also, too, I think this is an era where A&Rs can still go out and find music and like music. I was watching mm -hmm. a, a after I got done with the show on Thursday night mm -hmm. for no good reason whatsoever. Mm-hmm. I went down a rabbit hole because um, I'm waiting for this thing to download, right? And a video pops up on the YouTube feed that says um, why all these people hate Eddie Trunk. You know who Eddie Trunk is. Yeah. The yeah. Radio DJ. Yeah. Um, really into like classic metal and stuff. And that led me to all these other videos about bands that I just weren't really on my radar. I wouldn't say I hate them. They're just not on my radar. Like Lit. <laughs> lit. Oh my God. And uh, they're telling <laughs> the story of Lit. <laughs> Oh God! And I'm like, okay, well, because they they own a really cool club in Irvine. Uh huh. I can't remember the name of it. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, I don't know anything about Lit, so no. No, this club though, it's like the place in to play. Irvine? In Irvine? Yeah. Huh. It's like the spot to play. I don't know. Anyway, 
those dudes are like um you know trying to do the the metal thing it doesn't really work for them trying to do like the faith no mori metal thing it doesn't work yeah um then they kind of adapt their sound to a rockier version of what's going on with swingers <laughs> is that right? what that band sounds like oh man that's funny. right um because remember they had that song my own worst enemy yeah i think it it, yeah right yeah and so uh when they when they get signed they just live in in orange county which is the county south of los angeles county mm -hmm. from irvine to hollywood is what maybe an hour with traffic but it's a maybe. world apart yeah <laughs> but it is it's, it's a world apart so they go they were playing shows in la to like four people yeah and they had a manager which i find hilarious right so anyway they're playing a show at the viper room have you ever played the viper room i no, i know it well but i've not played there yeah okay so they're playing the, it's a tiny as hell viper room is yeah, super tiny big. so they're playing the viper room apparently four people are there mm -hmm. their manager is one of them and another person is like an a and r from a major label I feel like I've heard so many of those stories, and it's, it and it, it it seems like I don't know, like it's like really, uh, and, and you know, I've been I've been in situations myself where that kind of stuff has happened, mm -hmm. but it's like, but nothing happens from it like, because you know, we're too young. Yeah, we I guess so. just yeah, yeah. We, missed, we, we just missed that. Uh, we yeah. just missed that thing where it's like, oh, the kid, the kid with the jackets got pizzazz. Yeah, this, guy, this kid's going places. <laughs> Let's uh, give this guy a deal Let's and sign him quick. Sign hey, him you quick. like cocaine? You like whores? <laughs> exactly. Well, I'm married. We don't. We didn't ask you that, kid. <laughs> That's not what I asked you, kid. No, I, I asked I, you about the hookers. <laughs> but anyway, and then they become a thing, and you're yeah. like. This is interesting because this era is so gone. Oh yeah, and it was it was gone like practically overnight, <laughs> right? Like it was like, it was just there and it wasn't. And it wasn't because yeah. the, the ninety nine is like the end of people buying records. Yeah, or it starts to become the end of people buying records. Kind of like ninety four to me. When I think about the musical landscape of nineteen ninety four, there is a somberness to it. Mm -hmm. because i don't know if you agree and maybe this is just me um trying to overly historicize the time as i am writing about this year currently it's a very mm -hmm. important year to me because it's not just music this is also the year that starts big time financial deregulation that enables people right. to have easy access to credit that enables uh home prices to skyrocket in value that enables people to move out and build out suburbs and there is a lot of music that is made for the suburbs and i think 90 94 for me is kind of a big year just like in my pamphlet 84 is a big year right because right this is we're deep in the clinton era the i'm a new kind of democrat i'm really pro-business and like so on and so on and but, yeah. but this is gonna but the business is gonna liberate you so yeah, the same like, thing that reagan like, was saying right that's that, a different guy saying it no, we're we're for it because we somehow believe in some recloaked version of like trickle down economics or something. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, and, I, remember, I remember well. And <laughs> and when Cobain dies, which I find interesting about grunge, and I don't know if you feel this same way. Mm -hmm. I think we've talked about this. I think we've even talked about this with Toshi in the room. That sure, it's yeah. just a renaming of punk music because punk music isn't yeah. a viable genre with that moniker because and it has there's there so much associated with it that has to do with other uh time periods and it didn't it wasn't a term that was meant for that i mean already post-punk had already like come and gone as well punk yeah. and post-punk and it's interesting because for 91 was like okay everybody wanted their own nirvana so they let the freaks in for, for mm -hmm. like a short window of time i always talk about this in Patron Reversal, where there's a time period that they were like we don't understand what these kids are into so we will literally try anything because we all if you had a baggy it. sweater that looked like something <laughs> freddy krueger threw out because he was like i don't like the colors yeah you got a deal great here's here's your advance you know get, give us a hit <laughs> uh and that lasted for a couple years yeah. and then you got some really genre this pushing. is the year though would you say this is the year i don't know what to call these bands because this for me too is a year where punk music because i think what you do is is some sort of i don't want to say derivative but it's off of the same line sure as sure. what was happening in 94 and i don't know what i don't want to call it post grunge i think that's insulting 
No, it's not. So, 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 so let, let's pause that for a second. I was just going to say that, like, you had a couple years where they would let the freaks in, right? Then they began to realize, oh, we can just kind of manufacture our own bands that kind of sound like this. And then they're like, oh, well, so we're so far afield from this that we can actually just push this a different direction entirely. And for me, I've always looked at it from uh, like what, what, what interested me about that kind of music wasn't the, the trappings of like the fashion or whatever, or, or just the, like, even just the like, you know, fuck you, dad, like, uh, <laughs> like aspect of it. It was like, oh, this is interesting. This is rock music, which again, you have to understand that like at, uh, you know, at 15 or whatever, I've been exposed to rock music my entire life. But mm -hmm. I was like, oh, this sounds like now this is done in a way that's uh, taking sounds from like the bands that I love that are punk bands, but also applying it as these rock bands did. So if you want to talk about like what I do, like with Conan Neutron, the secret friends, it's the same sort of thing. It, it, it's like, it's like rock music. So rock music is, is become shorthand for throwback music. And that's not what I'm doing at all. Yeah. But I'm taking stuff that, again, if you think about uh, from, from as a historical period, 90s were not like last year, people. <laughs> This is like, this is this, we're getting we're into the Marty McFly machine right now. This is 30 years ago. This is the Marty McFly machine. And another thing I want to talk about, and we're going to get this. Down I, I, well, I was just going to say, oh, and so, so, so taking that with like the rest of, of rock history and be like, okay, well, what's a way to like take all of these things that are interesting and unique and in a songwriting perspective, present it in a way that comes off as uh, something new. And that is what I'm trying to do. So when people are like, oh, the grunge music, it's like, like get out of here first of all that was like that was a corporate term applied to yes. the punk of the day which yes. at a while it was like hey we don't want to sound like you know winger or, or whatever so we're gonna buy these like pawn shop amps and we're not gonna bother you know doing up our hair and like and and you know wearing well not all of them this this stage attire sure but, but i'm talking about something that that's embodying a, a stereotype so we have to talk about what embodies sure. a stereotype not what uh doesn't what, what, the, what the facts on the ground are right so so it's it's they're just doing loud guitar music that's informed from like hey this nuggets compilation is kind of kick ass you know it's it's kind of just as cool as like you know the sex pistols or flipper or whatever and and then the, a bunch of people are like oh it's called grunge it's like it's like well no nobody's supposed to, like hey let's start a grunge band ever like i'm thinking that mud honey video for mm -hmm. suck me dry where like some whole of his science is grunge out you know it's like that's perfect because they knew they knew obviously they're like a bunch of smart asses uh but then that even you know around this year is sort of right when that kind of stopped too and then it started to turn to that yarl music you know like the beget like creed and all that horrific stuff in yeah, 97 and uh new metal uh, you know kind of came in and it took all the aggression but made it just like you know directed at nothing <laughs> like, and, uh, and you can say the same thing about the the music that it's biting from yeah, sure, but I mean, it definitely. I mean, this like, but let's uh, let's be clear. New metal's mall music, right? Like you 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 talk about it a little bit with like this is sort of the start of that, and mm -hmm. then it kind of became like no, it became even more of a package product, and that became something that was almost like a reaction to the to the reaction, <laughs> but it was embodying of the times, whether you enjoy it or not. I don't. I don't like new new metal at all, personally. I can't stand it. Uh, but that said, I see where it came from, and I see where kids who heard it would be like oh this is music of the now this is music for me and what's interesting to me and this is, then then we can we can move on from this uh younger bands even like a little bit younger like my friends in chat pile they don't look at it with that way they don't have that that cultural context so you know they're looking at it like like you know the, 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 they like the, that first corn album is good i'm like is it though <laughs> but you, you know what i'll say about but they don't people? have that cultural aspect you know it, why right? though so, because they didn't grow up with the stories that were extremely racist about right, well you hear there's this horrible sexist stuff happening there's this horrible racist stuff happening. like they didn't have any of that they just were engaging with the music on its own and, face but, but new metal let's be honest it's breaking a lot of that there's a lot of women in it there's a lot of people of color in it hmm. it's mixing aggressive music that's still popular at the time. It's official, officially arena music, so it's everywhere for these kids, right? Now they have mandatory Metallica in, in 94. Oh, yeah. We didn't have that. Metallica was fringe music when we were coming up. If you listened to yeah. Metallica, oh, yeah. you were an outcast kid. Pre-Black Album, yeah. It was, it yeah, was like, pre-Black pre Album, pre-Black Album Heavy Metal. Yeah. And 1994 is different worlds, and Heavy Metal starting to become a cliche word. This is where bands like Megadeth are thinking like, oh, maybe we should change our name. 
Right, right, because we're far afield from him. even even Ozzy with like you know no more no more tears and stuff like you yeah, know, like it's, you, it's, it's like different. It's or, or a ballot now. Yeah, um, the aggression is pretty much not gone. even crazy train anymore. You know, it's like the crazy all, train done left the station at that point. All those bands, a lot of their aggression that they have in their earlier works, like if you go to '86, if you, if you talk about just metal, Metallica, mm -hmm. Slayer, Megadeth, Anthrax, all yeah, release their yeah. classic records, right? Master of Puppets, Among the Living, South South of Heaven, and Peace Sells But Who's Buying. Mm -hmm. That's 86 from the top. Yeah. Big year. Even MTV does a whole special. There's this new thing called speed metal. By 1994, just eight years later, they're all making radio-friendly songs with very predictable verse, chorus, formulaic patterns. No more eight-minute, seven-minute opuses. They're releasing actual singles now. Yeah. With the exception of Slayer, right? Slayer's like ACDC. You're gonna get the same record. <laughs> Slayer's always gonna sound like Slayer. Exactly. <laughs> for for our whole for our whole time. And I think there are young people from the new metal world that grew up with those Metallica records and then Pantera. Sure. Yeah, and maybe. they also grew up digging later rap especially the quote-unquote gangster stuff it wasn't taboo to them well and also faith no more right i mean like what has what has mike Patton roth you know <laughs> like, is it faith no more is it more beastie boys and anthrax it's it's i, like I think that. it could be it's both. faith no more <laughs> faith no more is huge like and again i it's not just any one thing right no yeah i agree but, I, but all you said about all the nice things you said about new metal i didn't see or hear any of that all I saw was a bunch of directionless rage by the same assholes that would pick on the 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 weird. But kids that's how I feel about all the stuff that you dig. I was, okay, right? Well, I guess it just depends on, on who you're it talking. It sounds to, like but... it sounds like fuck you, mom and dad shit. Yeah, me. that that is exactly what new metal is, and nothing more than that. But that sounds like the same it? shit. It's like eh, a lot of this shit is fuck. Well, that's mom a lot. That's youth music, right? There's there's a <laughs> fuck you. Mom and dad. This shit is fuck you, mom and dad. Then there's it turned into whining about fuck you, them? mom and dad. Can we admit them? <laughs> there's a pretension. Yeah. There's a pretension to the I don't want to call them post grunge. Let's just call them post grunge. The bands that you talked about that get signed in between like 94 to 98. Mm -hmm. The guys that actually went to college. Yeah, right, right, right. All those college guys that got signed, all the people that got played on MTV 120 minutes. There was a pretension with these cats. And it's very alienating. Whether or not you want to admit it, as somebody that was there, I'm like, nah. Well, that was like this pavement so weird, right? I mean, like pavement, like I even though they were from the next town over from me. I would not engage with payment pavement of any kind. So like, oh, that's just like whatever. Those are annoying guys. I don't care about that. And then then I actually like listened to him. I was like, oh, actually, a lot of this is pretty good. And then I saw him live. I'm like, yeah, yeah, okay, this is cool. And Scott Camberg was always around like at these same shows that I was playing with like 20 people and whatever. I was like, oh, this guy seems like actually pretty awesome. And then I was like, oh no, their crowd's annoying. Their crowd, their crowd are <laughs> really annoying. And but this is a band that like, yeah, like uh, there's a lot of things that put me off of pavement. Like they add to the slacker attitude of which I was like, I to say that so first of all one Oof, cannot overestimate slacker. you brought me back brother yeah the the boomer culture oh, of man. just being like oh there's so much of slackers this and that can you can you just briefly explain to people why we were called slackers because they wanted to diminish us and make <laughs> us feel terrible because like okay you could sum it up with if you ever listen to we didn't start the fire by billy joel <laughs> which is basically a litany of grievances about how generation x all young people but at this point it was generation x like needs to like wise up and realize how important the boomers are right we were told from the beginning that 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 oh you don't do anything uh you don't engage earnestly with anything and you don't matter and we were kept away from the levers of power still are by the way <laughs> by the same generation and but people don't understand what Generation X even is. And you and I are both on the tail end of that. We're like mm -hmm. more Oregon Trail generation. <laughs> but, the, but the idea of like, no, you can't hurt us. <laughs> we've, we've never had engagement earnestly of any kind other than what we've created ourselves. We create our own systems. We have to. We, were, we, rose, we raised ourselves. We were kept away from any kind of, uh, of the levers of power or control. And we had to create our own systems. So I don't even understand how millennials, I'm like, oh, this, you know, why don't you just go do this and like make this better? What, what, what? Like they don't even get it because they're not, they've grown up 
with these walled gardens of like, well, this is how you express yourself. It's on these mm -hmm. platforms in this manner. And if they just change the rules on you and make it terrible uh, to deal with, then that's just the way it is. No, it isn't. <laughs> that is the way it is at all. Because that's so against, like we're the opposite of the actual slacker generation. But the problem is they they wanted earnest engagement. Boomers wanted to be told how good they were. Oh, you did so much good. Yes, mm -hmm. we agree. You're so great. You're you know you're better than us. And nobody thought that. And they were mad. <laughs> and they were mad about it. And that's what it comes down to. And